So this is the first image that we saw emerge. You'll remember this happened on Friday. And let's play the clip of what Andrew said. Now you can see this is just as they exit the jail. They haven't cleaned up yet. They haven't done anything. Pay attention to what Andrew says. I think it's very, very important. Let's play it. When I was in jail, I focused on doing push-ups and reading the Quran. And when I am home, I will focus on doing push-ups and reading the Quran. MashaAllah! Don't believe the top G! Okay. You can see that there were many supporters that were on site. What what was incredibly impressive to me, and I don't know him personally. But this is a man that's been through hell and back. Look at his composure. Look at his calm. Look how he exited that as if he had been through, you know, I don't know, maybe a 24 hour or whatever. He doesn't look like it It took his life force away. For some people who had gone through that, that would have wrecked them. They would have completely wrecked them. He walks out. He's laser focused, by the way, on the things that he is prioritizing in this moment. And I think it's very important to acknowledge what that is. When he was in jail, he focused on push-ups, which he's always talking about the ability of fitness, the ability of pushing your body to kind of get your mind in order. You know, he always says to those guys, if you're depressed, go get a six pack and come back to me. He practices what he preaches. That tells me that he believes what he's saying. He went in there. He did those push-ups to try to keep his mind in order and the Quran. So this is a man who has changed. And a lot of that content that you see from him in those former years and those early years, which, by the way, is a lot of the content that the media clings to, I don't think that's representative of where he is today. This is a guy who has talked about the Quran in detail. You're going to see several uh, posts come from him in that regard. But I thought it was really interesting that his first message to the world is composed, is calm, is not someone who looks erratic, is someone who looks like he's in control of what's happened, was incredibly polite and was respectful of those asking the questions and is focused on two things wellness, right? To get your mind in order in terms of those push-ups. Let me keep my focus. Let me keep my aura intact. That's number one. And number two was the Quran. That tells you where he's at. Very, very important. Okay. Then we go to the next one. Deli, you can pull that up. This is going to go in order. So, okay. This is, uh, let me see where that one is. Trying to do these all crazy. Okay. Let's play. Now this, we're going to have to mute for you guys. Okay, this is him walking around. Uh, you see, this is the first video that emerged of him in his own house. And what it says is, I'm going to read above it. Since last year, I've been in 24-hour lockdown, no yard time, pacing a three-meter cell with zero electronics or outside contact. Absolute clarity of mind, real thoughts, real plans, vivid pain, one hour home, and I can't stand my phone. Some habits die hard. We must defend. Uh, defeat Shaitan. Shaitan is, a, I believe, an evil spirit. So you see him walking around. You see, now what type of state of mind does he look like he's into? This looks like a guy who's already planning his next move. Now, this is before he even shaved. He did anything. He walked in. You know, he's his trademark, cigar smoking. You know how I feel about that. But regardless. And he looks, I mean, to be honest with you, for a guy that's been in jail for a couple of months under horrific conditions, looks pretty fit. He definitely was doing those push-ups in there and looks like he is about to figure out what is next. What I really appreciate about these two guys is that laser focus. I, I get the feeling that there's there's no rest <laughs> in that in that family. And it's really just point A, point B, point C, point D. And it's it's a lesson for everyone, right? This has been a lesson for everyone because you find yourself in situations or circumstances that are not advantageous to you. You can't let that stuff sink you. You have to figure out a way to navigate your way out. And one thing that's really impressive, I saw some tweets that were coming through. There was one in particular about a guy who had had cancer and was having these exchanges with Andrew, and it really helped him to have that mind over matter. They're very, very, very deep into the power of the mind. And that's something that's very hard to do. It's something a lot of people can't do. And it's such an important message because your mind oftentimes does run your body. You know, when, when we talk in wellness about the connection of the mind to the body, if you're anxiety ridden, depressed, your body is going to feel that pain, that turmoil. And that often does manifest in disease. This is a guy who you can see 
He just doesn't allow for that type of mental chaos. And that's very, very admirable. And by the way, very, very challenging. It's not something I do well, admittedly. Um, but that was the, the first image we saw that everyone was commenting on of him. And again, what is he talking about? The phone, distraction, not an important thing. Again, we must defeat Shaitan. This is talking about like an evil spirit. There is a connection to religion there. Again, okay. Then he began to retweet some things that I thought were really interesting because remember, sometimes you retweet what is in your active state of mind or stuff that you are prioritizing. This is a guy who came right out of the gate and could have talked about anything. This is the stuff he's choosing to focus on that tells you where his head is at and where he's going. So we have this um, next tweet, if you see. This is a retweet of a woman. I don't know if he knows her. Dale, you have that third one? Yep. Okay. If you want a man to protect, provide, and care for you, then make sure you're a woman who is worth protecting, providing, and being cared for. He doesn't need much, but what he does need is a nice meal, a warm embrace, and a clean, peaceful home. But most of all, he needs respect. This was really interesting to me, that he chose to focus on all the issues that he could have zeroed in on right out of the gate. This is something that he chose to focus on. And what it tells me is that I think that he probably, throughout the last two months, has had the support of women around him that have really helped him to get through what's gone on. And he repeatedly will talk about the power of women and the power of the right woman to ground a man. We can flip off the tweet and come back to the full screen. And I think it's really interesting that he, he in this, he, he's calling out, right, women who aren't doing what guys need, right? This is, this is, a, this is a bit of a, a dig at modern women, right? As it should be, frankly. And he's saying, if you want all of these things from a guy, if you want to be provided for, if you want to be protected, if you want to be cared for, and you have a right to want those things, you also have to provide something for that man. You can't create chaos in his world. You have to be someone who, when we talk about femininity and we talk about the beauty of being a woman, that is someone who cares about the home, who wants to bring peace. Because if that guy is gonna go through hell and back for you, if that guy's gonna make sure that you are financially taken care of, if that guy, when you know what hits the fan, is gonna step up to the plate and he's gonna say, don't you worry, don't you stress, I've got this, then you need to be able to create calm around him. So he's reminding you this, and, and people of course got offended, but in reality, he's really reminding you of the beauty of the compliment between a woman who really loves her man and a man who really loves his woman. That's really interesting to me that right out of the gate, because this is a topic that is controversial and one that he's known for, and he chose to focus on right from the top. Okay. Then we have another one coming after that. Let's see what we have here. These are all, Dell. you can just keep pulling these mm -hmm. in order and I will, okay. So this is a response to the tweet above. You see that top girl, Kiko, um, JD, fuel your man with energy, not just sexual energy, but emotional and spiritual energy. If he's a worthy man, you in turn will reap big rewards. And he writes above it, to give a man emotional energy and take a man's emotional energy are completely different and often confused female actions. He needs fuel for the tank if you expect him to take you far. And that's the thing. I think women oftentimes will focus on men and say, well, I want this, I want this, I expect this. But in the process, they drain those guys, right? Instead of, instead of refueling the tank and helping them to be the strongest warrior that they can be for the family, they just drain, right? Drain, drain, drain. You can't do that. Well, you can, but you won't have that same strong guy on the front lines for you then. That guy needs reinforcement. And what that reinforcement is, your warmth, your support, your loyalty, your respect, that beautiful home, that peace, right? No person can go out into chaos repeatedly without having some grounding in peace. And for men, particularly men like this, who are warriors at their core, that peace is that woman by his side. I don't know if he has more than one woman. I'm not sure what he practices. Um, I I'm not really sure. But regardless, that orbit around him is calm, right? Calm. You can't go from storm to storm. You can go from calm to storm. So I think that was really interesting. And I think it, it really speaks to if he emerges from that jail cell with that calm and he emerges with that composure, which is really, frankly, astonishing. I was like, wow, he doesn't look frazzled at all. And some of that you can say, well, some of that is for the camera, what he wants to display. Sure. But if you're really frazzled inside, some of that is going to come through. It's absolutely going to come through. And I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing an incredible sense of peace emerge from him. So where did that piece come from? I guarantee you that some of that piece came from his surroundings and who he chooses to surround himself with, particularly the women around him. Okay. 
Then he does not, interestingly enough, right out of the gate, does not shy away from controversy and goes after one of the most heated topics of all. And wokeness says, okay, we can pull that up. And wokeness posts this. It says, woke pastor explains why drag is holy. Let's play a little bit of the TikTok and then we will get, well, he says haram. So you know where he's going with that. Let's play it. Drag is holy. There has been an assault on the rights of drag performers in this country, and we must call out the hypocrisy and the injustice. Jesus called himself a mother hen longing to gather up her chicks. Gender is a construct, you see. And if Jesus can be a mother hen, then you can dress in drag. I've even heard it said that Jesus was and humanity is God in drag. Okay, so this guy so is obviously say- off the rails, right? Could we all attest to the guy's got a little something upstairs ain't right, right? There's no nicer way to say it. Um, drag is holy apparently now. I'm, you know, it's a little sickness going on. Regardless, what's interesting, this is one of the most controversial topics you can talk about right now. You have people getting censored on big tech constantly for even wading into these discussions. This is a guy who's just coming out of a couple of months of prison. This is a guy who went into prison, by the way, remember, right after he had that exchange with Greta Thunberg on climate change. We all know the climate agenda is the baby of the of the woke, disturbing leftist garbage movement. These, you know, one world government movement. And now he's going right into the fire, right, with Haram saying this is disgusting, gross, a sacrilege, all of that. Interesting that he would choose to wade into those waters right away. So what does that tell you? It tells you that this guy's not going anywhere. He the, he the message of sit down and shut up did not register for him. He was like, mm, yeah, no thanks. He's still going to be controversial. He's still going to wade into these topics. In fact, he may wade into them even more so because they tried to silence him and it didn't work. So the message, the takeaway is I would not expect him to be a watered down version of himself. I would not expect him to be afraid to talk about things. If anything, I would expect him to vocalize that stuff a little bit more, knowing full well that there's a target on his back, knowing full well that everyone in media, all the people who are probably trying to get interviews with him, nasty, right? They're like, oh, how can we get him? Vice is probably like, hey, remember us? <laughs> remember that guy that looked, was highly feminized and went into the boxing ring and was like, oh my God, I'm going to get hurt. hurt. You know, he's probably made a phone call. Really? I, I could sit down with you this time, Andrew. I promise I'll be nice. You know how they operate. But he's not playing, he's not playing games, right? This guy's going to come out of the gate and he's going to be himself. So anyone who was worried, oh man, he's going to be quiet. Mm -mm, mm -mm. By the way, he still has a target on his back. Don't think that the folks in the matrix who can't stand this guy, don't think they've all of a sudden had some type of awakening. They know exactly what the agenda is and the agenda is still to silence him, but he also knows it's going to be a lot harder to shut him up than they thought it was going to be. Okay. Then we have cat turd, you know, cat turd, cat turd was mad at me at one point. Um, I wasn't pro-Trump enough for Cat Turd, so he took it out on me. But it's fine. I forgive. It's all good. Anyway, Cat Turd says, if you speak truth to power, the New World Order will do anything to destroy you and have you silenced. They'll frame you, jail you, bankrupt you, lie about you, plant evidence, anything to shut you up from telling the truth. Just look at Julian Assange, President Trump, Andrew Tate, General Flynn, and on and on. Anyone whose voice gets too big and starts revealing the truth will be demonized by their media propagandas, vilified, destroyed, and punished for telling the truth. Anytime someone exposing these evil demons suddenly gets arrested, take it to the bank, it's a lie and they're innocent. Now, why is this important? Well, Andrew retweeted this uh, because that's what happened, right? That's what happened. I mean, why else would you arrest a guy? It just doesn't make any sense. This story doesn't make any sense. I don't care how many times Destiny comes on here and accuses, oh, human trafficking. Where is the evidence? So now we're supposed to believe that this guy is somehow guilty, even though they brought him in, they kept him, they didn't charge him, and now they've released him to house arrest? No, this doesn't, the story is, is loaded loaded with holes as big, this big, right? We all know that. We can all acknowledge that now. He was a threat to the system. I told you that right off the gate, right, right when I realized that I had gotten triggered and I was like, wait a second, why am I getting triggered by this guy? There's truth to what he's saying. And wait a minute, do I have some internal programming chip that I need to pull out? And as it turns out, I did. So out. But this guy is a deep threat to the system. Politically, once I realized that he was wading into political topics that the WHO and the WEF and all these big organizations weren't going to like, I realized he was going to be in trouble, right? And what's interesting, at this time, I also wrote a tweet. I didn't pull that one, so don't worry, Daily, but 
I said, remember when Hillary Clinton lied under oath? And do you remember when he, she said she didn't know what the C in confidential meant when there was a whole email scandal? She was like, I have no idea what that C means. I don't even know. I thought it meant, you know, classify. She was lost in space. In the meantime, she had signed documents that said she knew exactly what that meant, what that C in confidential meant. She knew exactly all of those things. So she lied. Interesting that she hasn't been indicted yet, right? And people were like, why? Well, why? Because she's part of the system. She's their beloved little Hillary Clinton. She could walk down the street, do something terrible and get away with it. That's why. The reason that these people are being targeted is because they're a threat to what the system wants to propagate in society, right? Complete and total threat. This guy has been a threat. He's always going to be a threat. So he's always going to have a target on his back. And oddly, I think he's comfortable knowing that. He's like, you know what? I'd rather know where I stand. So you got to respect him for that. Okay. Then he says, this is another interesting, uh, interesting tweet that comes out. The next one you can pull up, Delhi. Okay. In a jail cell for an unknown period of time, facing the largest of battles. It was the perfect time for any traitors on my team to betray me, but my team remained solid, flawless. I am the perfect judge of character, surrounded by impeccable men. Teams like mine cannot lose. So interestingly enough, I hope he paid attention to this, and I'm sure he did. There were a lot of people... Now, his internal team, I will say, you know, his friends um, all really rallied uh, around him, which I think is really a testament to the brotherhood that he speaks of. And, and that's really how it should be. When you have real family, real friends, they know you at your core. And when somebody makes an accusation, they're like, hold on a second. This isn't the person that I know. And they rally to your side. That's how it should be. That's how you know that you have a real team around you that feels strong and healthy and robust. So I, I saw that on his team. It was, it was quite impressive. Um, you also saw all the traders come out and you also saw all the people who were like, oh, I don't know. I'm on the fence, this, that, who were willing to throw him under the bus. I've seen a lot of people in the last 48 hours suddenly come out and be like, oh, you know, trying to get on his good side again. And I'm thinking to myself, you guys were throwing him under the bus when he got arrested. You decided that he was guilty on second one. You decided all of these things about him. You bought into the media talking points because you didn't want to be flagged. You didn't want to be censored. You didn't want your YouTube channel to be pulled down. Me, 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 go for grown babies. And now that he's under house arrest, you're like, oh, well, now he's going to get out. So let me get back on his good side again. Let me tell you something. You're messing with the wrong dude. This guy's got eyes in front of his head. He's got eyes in back of his head. He saw what you did. He saw and he took note. He's got a little notepad. He wrote it down and your name is in there. So that's number one. But I think it's also a really interesting testament to... The fact that when you do build this brotherhood, they talk about this brotherhood. And, and what's been interesting is to see is like these things that they're talking about are real for them. You know, I, I get him get in my jail cell and I'm doing push ups. That's real for him. That advice that he gives out is real for him. It's lived in this stuff he's talking about, about a brotherhood who will have your back till the end. That's real for him. That's his life. He's seeing the positive benefits and effects of that in real time. And he's showing you, everyone out there find this for yourself. It's irreplaceable. And it will pick you up when times, you know, are very challenging. And when you have to navigate around the tools of the matrix, you've got a team with you. You don't want to do that alone, right? And I always say, like, move to a community where you can have a real community around you, people that really genuinely care, people who have, you know, a similar vision of what a good, prosperous society looks like, well-intentioned people. That's the goal. Okay, this is really interesting as well, this next one. He says, I remember this, and he shows a photo from uh, a chess tournament. Do you have that one? Yep. Okay, so that's chess family, and it's a photo there. And he says, I remember this. I remember him withdrawing me from the tournament when I was six years old. I beat the first two adults, then lost three in a row. I asked, will I be able to beat them at chess when I'm grown up? He replied, son, once you grow up, you'll beat anyone at anything. What a, what a dad, man. What a dad to say that. Um, imagine going through life feeling that way, feeling that sense of I can accomplish anything, right? You've got that push behind you that's telling you, one, do better when you need to do better, but also your potential is here, you know? And think about how many kids grow through life and they're always being told, well, that's too hard or... I don't know if you want to do that or you have limitations on. That's very confining, right? This He seems to have had a father that said, you want to make it happen, you're going to make it happen, which is very indicative of the man that you see today. I thought that was very powerful. He talks about his father a lot. But I thought that was very, very indicative of who he is as a person. And when you see him walk out of a jail cell and look kind of just 
strangely together. I mean, frankly, listen, <laughs> I get more frazzled if my trip to the grocery store doesn't go well, right? I come out and I'm like, the day is ruined, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's over. Andrew Tate walks out of jail looking more composed and calm than I do when I've just had an average rough morning, okay? So this guy is built for war. I don't care if you love him or hate him. The guy is built for war. And if you know what hits the fan, this is exactly the kind of guy that you want front and center, that you don't want sitting in a jail cell, by the way, and that you want to be strategically figuring out, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. This is a guy that's got plans, right? This is a guy that figures out, you know, a place to go. It's like nuclear war. And he's somewhere eating beef jerky. And it's fine, right? And you're like, where is that guy? That's where we all need to be. What did he figure out? Because this is always going. And it's not frazzling him. This is the state you want to get yourself. When they talk about stoicism, this is what they're talking about, by the way. They're strengthening that because you're not frazzled like me going to the grocery store like a crazy person. Okay. Um, I want to do... Let's do two of Tristan's. Do you see those, yep. Deli? We're going to do two of Tristan. I don't want to leave Tristan out of this because Tristan also, I know sometimes he's the little brother and people forget, but I don't. I want to do two of those. And then I just want to give you some context of where I think this is going. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, Tristan says, there are many convicted criminals. This was great on Instagram. I get falsely imprisoned and when released without charges, I return to find my profile. Gone. He's talking about his Instagram. My content is cars, suits, and motivational quotes. Who's got Zuck's number? Somebody talked to him for me. Which was, but you know, it's true. If you looked at Tristan, because in this whole process, Tristan's Instagram vanished, you remember. If you looked at that page, it was nothing. It was just that. It was cars and, you know, the, him looking at like fancy jewelry. And it was, there was nothing there. There wasn't even, he wasn't even wading into gender stuff or controversy. Andrew wades into controversy when it comes to politics much more. It wasn't any of that on the page. So they decided they didn't like him. They decided, again, Media at large, big tech at large decided these are guys who are threatening, who've been accused of something. We don't like the accusations. Hence, we are going to define them as guilty. We're going to pull their platforms down. We're going to minimize the influence. We're going to use the fact that they've been accused of something as an excuse to censor them. That's all big tech needs. It's an excuse to say, oh, now we have justification. Pull it all down. Minimize their reach. That's how this works. This is a game of just strategy, right? Opportunity arose to silence them and they seized on it with zero justification. There was zero justification to shut Tristan Tate's account down. Zero. And yet they do it. And the only place it's not happening is uh, Twitter because Elon Musk. These people are, by the way, these, these big tech sitting behind the computer making these decisions, monsters, a lot of them, real evil stuff going on. Then he says, um, this is interesting and I thought very indicative. You saw the before, same shirt, and I guess he went shaved up, cleaned up, kind of looking more on the right, like what we're used to seeing Tristan look like. And he says, there is neither happiness nor misery in this world. There is only the comparison of one state with another, nothing more. And that's a quote. Interesting. Again, though, these guys, do you realize what they've been through? Come to their house, stick them in jail. We covered all of this in horrific conditions, Un unable to have a proper, you know, their lawyers weren't getting the information, getting it a couple hours before big files to review, gross injustices in the legal system. His own American lawyer didn't have access to him. There was talk at one point, was he getting the medical care he needed? We found out he did get to the hospital. But there were a lot of questions about what was going on. Do they look like two guys that have just been through battle? I, I don't see it. I, I'm, in, I'm in awe of just the... Here I am. I mean, Tristan was making jokes about alligator shoes. I'm like, what were y'all doing? Did you have some filet mignon in that prison that we don't know about? I mean, to come out so, it's a testament. And it's, it, you know what? Listen, if they were out there saying all the stuff that they've said, and they came out and walked out and looked like I would, frazzled, hair standing on end, eyes bloodshot, shaking like a leaf, uh, you know, you would be like, these guys are full of it, right? They're telling everybody to do all this stuff and look at them. They're falling apart at the seams, but that didn't happen. So they are, they are actually practicing what they preach. I, I'm, I can't believe the composure and the calm and the peace, which is also, I guess, speaks to religion in some respect too. I think Andrew found religion and in that found a lot of, of ground, like in, in terms of plant your feet in the ground, 
You know, you have a, a different perspective. There's a humility that comes with that that is unavoidable when you embrace religion, any religion for that matter, when you really embrace something bigger than you. Okay. So what do we see here as a, in sum to get on to the rest of what we have co to cover for today? But what do we see here? So we're going to have tons of media that want to talk to him. We've talked about that already. I can't even imagine the outreach. It's probably like everybody who hates this guy trying to, oh, we'd love to, we'd love to do an interview. Yeah, yeah he knows, honey. He knows. He knows you want to talk to him. So here's what I would do if I were him. People asked me this the other day, Jed, what would you do? You've been in the media business for a long time. People forget. They see me here sitting at this microphone railing against, you know, feminism and all that. But that that is my industry, right? I know how evil national media is because I was in it, battling it. Lost a couple jobs battling it as well. I wouldn't talk to any of them. If I were him, I would take several days and I would talk to no one. No, his Twitter is fine. His zero. Let them fester. Their hair is going to be standing on end. They'll be outside his house soon. Well, please. Ah, you know, haggard. Let him get haggard. He knows that ultimately, if he has that conversation, he's going to be edited, whatnot. By the way, that brings me to another point. Let me write a note here. Okay. When he ultimately decides to speak to the world, he should do it himself. He should go on his rumble and he should speak directly to everybody with completely no filter. Don't give anybody else, whether it's uh, an interviewer, I I'm talking about myself to anybody. Don't give anybody the satisfaction of that opportunity. That's your moment. Take it unfiltered. Speak to everyone. Go on your channel. That's where you should do it. That's number one. Then he should agree to, he should handpick a few people that he thinks he's going to get a fair shot to tell his story. Right. And he should go there and he should have those conversations if he wants to at all, if he needs to at all. He doesn't need to. But if he chooses to do so and he should not agree to do any content that is edited, zero, zero. It's either live or it doesn't happen. You tell them that you're Andrew Tate and you say it's either live or it doesn't happen. They'll do it live. They'll do it live. You'll embarrass them, but you'll, they'll do it live. They want the views. They want the hits. And I would be very, very diligent about not giving energy, time, clicks to people who are going to try to utilize this as an opportunity to make you look bad. You just, it's just, it doesn't help you. You don't need them. And there's no better way to aggravate the media at large, by the way, than to ignore them, right? Because they're, they're attention whores at, 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 they're attention hungry. They are. They're just always like, me, me, you want to talk to me? And some of them are sitting in these, I remember, you know, working at The View, you have all this clout, right? You're like, oh, everybody wants to talk to The View, ha, ha, ha. you know? The people who didn't, the people who said, I'm good, always drove them nuts. They would be like, they don't want to come on The View. And I'd be like, no, they don't want to come on because you're going to marginalize them. You're going to make a mess of it. You're going to, it's going to, you're going to cut to commercial at the wrong, no, they don't need to be tortured for nothing. So there's some, some people that grow wise to that real quick and they're like, nah, I'm good. And I always got a little, little perk in my step when I, people, oh, he declined. <laughs> I'd laugh. Even though I was on the show, I was like, what a smart person to decline coming here because I knew what was going to happen to that person. So he should be very careful about what he does. Um, I think that you're going to see uh, an Andrew who's focused on the Quran. I think you're going to see an Andrew that's focused on calling out the bad stuff in society, right? The hedonism. I think you're going to see a guy who's been through it and had a lot of time to self-reflect and has more of a focus than you've seen in a long time. I think you're going to see a guy who realizes what's out to get, not just him, but the rest of society and is going to make targeted comments about things that he knows his influence has weight on. I think you're going to see a stronger uh, Andrew Tate than you've seen probably ever. And it, I think that if knowing what, what I know of him from research him extensively. I think ultimately he he's probably feeling very grateful for the experience of having been arrested and having been publicly targeted. It gave him a chance to see who his friends really are. It gave him a chance to expose the losers who were just looking for the clicks, right? It gave him a chance to know if that inner circle is intact. And if not, where are the weak links and they're going to get tossed out. And it gave him an idea of who's targeting him and why. And it gave him probably a renewed passion also to speak out because this is a guy who has influence. Listen, no one comes after you if you don't have influence, right? No one, no one tries to get you fired. No one tries to shut you up unless what you're saying has the ability to convince people that there's a better way, that there's a different way. So this guy now knows his power more than ever before, and it's accurate. 
He's he has a very, very, very far and wide reach. And there's a lot of people that are pissed off because they know that all of what just happened in the last two months was unjust. All of it unjust, and that the Matrix was happy to let it be unjust just so they could silence a guy who was trying to prevent the Matrix agenda from infiltrating your life. You, the little guy out there, this guy is speaking up for you. And now you know it, and he knows it, and the Matrix knows it, so whew, it's about to get spicy. If you like the short clip and wanna watch the full episode, click here, and if you wanna connect with me one-on-one on, -one on Manect, you're gonna click right here. Let's get to talking.